the sports barn. It is Wednesday, uh, the 10th. I don't know. These days run together. All I know is it's Wednesday. Wednesday, 10th of uh, February. Big E, the R, uh, Eric Arnold, the Eric Arnold there. I had a winning day. I can refer to myself as the. Uh, one in a row. Woo-wee. Well, I ain't throwing it back. I'll tell you that. Um, what did we have there last night? Uh, guess we'll give it to you here quick. There's nothing better than betting against Duke and then having Duke just not cover and lose the game outright. So Notre Dame beating Duke outright. Oh, what a beautiful thing. They're going to, I mean, I want to dance on the graves and say they're going to miss the tournament, but, you know, I wouldn't put it past Duke to, you know, just go on and win the ACC tournament just to spite everybody or just win enough games and then, you know, the committee puts them ahead of some, you know, mid-major that's 28-2. and two. Uh, Oh, well, you know, they, they didn't really play anybody, but Duke, you know, they're, they're one game below 500. We have to put them in. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, we were way off here with this Dayton game. I saw some of that. Um, yeah, just way off there. VCU, much the best, much better than Dayton. Dayton, very unimpressive. Have to remember that in the future. This was a screw up. Alabama, they didn't get it done. Uh, they were in position to cover, and then three straight possessions at the end. Uh, turnover, turnover, missed, wild missed three. It was bad. So they do not cover. Um, I, I, it, Alabama might just be a little tired right now. I, I thought about that as I was making the pick, and I thought, well, too late now. So, yeah, too late now. Uh, here, we're going to, I don't know. I don't know how long I'll do this. We'll see if I like doing it or not. But my hero of the night is in this game. Hero of the night. Guy's name is Jalen Tate from Arkansas. Plays for Arkansas. He's actually from Pickerington, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. So he had uh, two free throws down 80 to 79. Two free throws, about four seconds to go. Not a great free throw shooter. Makes them both. Puts Arkansas up 81-80. They go on to win, beating Kentucky at Lexington. Probably the first time Arkansas has beaten Kentucky in forever. He's the hero. He's the hero for Arkansas. He's the hero for us because he put us up for a winning night. Jalen Tate. Salute. Onward we go. Penn State did just enough to get the cover. Uh, they should have won the game outright, but... You know, that's why Tom Izzo is a great coach, and that's why Penn State doesn't go to the tournament, because Izzo squeaks out wins like that, and Penn State loses them. But Penn State did enough to cover the three and a half. Uh, we're in the wrong place here. It, this is where we're just about done here with these home teams, because, you know, this COVID stuff is just ridiculous. What should be, you're, you're the home team, and, and Bob Huggins... Doesn't cover on the road, generally speaking, I think, because the way they play basketball at West Virginia is just foul the shit out of it with the theory that the referees cannot possibly call all those fouls. So at home, West Virginia is pretty good because the refs are intimidated by the home crowd, either intimidated by Huggins, uh, so the a whistle goes silent often. Uh, on the road, though, Hey, you know, feel free to call those uh, fouls that West Virginia commits over and over again. Well, last night, Texas Tech shot like 20 less free throws than West Virginia. That's not supposed to happen at home. Uh, it wouldn't happen in a normal year. It simply would not happen. Uh, I applaud the Texas Tech coach for going crazy at the end then, just basically letting those officials know Hey, you know, we're on the floor here, too. What are you guys doing? So he, he threw a fit. He got kicked out. Didn't help us. We had already lost. So I'm really starting to question whether home teams are, you know, I'm just thinking, let's just do what I always do. Let's pick visiting teams. You know, we had Creighton. 
They were a runaway winner. This game was postponed. Uh, four wins, three losses. Like I said, I'm not giving it back. I'm not giving it back. I guess we were three and zero when it came to picking against the uh, Blue Bloods. Uh, maybe that's something we ought to just stick to. Like I said, it. it, it what is Kentucky now? Five wins and twelve losses. Five wins and thirteen losses. I've lost track. I mean, it, 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 same with Duke. Duke's below five hundred. COVID doesn't explain this, guys. This is on you, Shashevsky. It's on you, Cal Perry. So it's good to see. You know these guys that. Um, live and die with their McDonald's All-Americans, the, these one and donners. Uh, maybe they're actually losing to cohesive teams this year. So I don't feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for me because i got to live in this goddamn COVID world, but uh, I feel sorry for you too, but some of you enjoy. Uh, and I'm not taking that back either. All right, what else we got here? Um, so let's go on. we got 14 games here for uh, today, so let's get going. Uh, early game, I think this kicks off at like four. Uh, we're gonna take UConn over Providence. Uh, UConn is right on the edge of the tournament. I think uh, uh, Dan Hurley is a better coach. Uh, Ed Cooley's not a bad coach for Providence, but um, UConn's on the edge of the tournament. Providence is generally out of the tournament. They need a miracle to make it. So we're going to say UConn does enough uh, to get this one done. UConn is still a team that is, you know, uh, they have an NBA guy that's hurt. And depends who you listen to. He might be back before the end of the month. And if he comes back and can give them, you know, if he's back to normal, UConn's a dangerous team. Uh, that's a team that could get hot in the tournament if they had that NBA. You know, they're Jimmy Chitwood. If, you, if they can get Jimmy back, if if we got Jimmy, you know, then you know, look out. But for now, they'll have to play without Jimmy. But uh, they have uh, uh, Gene Hackman there, Dan Hurley as coach, and we think he's going to pass the ball four times at least in each possession and do enough to get the W. All right, Indiana and Northwestern. Um, Indiana's on the edge of the tournament. Uh, they need to keep winning. This is a game they have to have. They can't afford to stub their toe against Northwestern and make the tournament. Northwestern already beat them this year. So I'm just thinking that they will have Indiana's full attention. I really do think Indiana will be giving these guys their full attention. Uh, Indiana's not that bad. I mean, they just beat Iowa. So, I'm thinking a fully focused Indiana is going to be enough to get Northwestern by more than three and a half points. Uh, Fordham, again, we're going on the road here. We're catching ten points. Fordham stinks, but Fordham finally fired their joke of a coach who, every time you pick up any kind of preseason college basketball magazine, if you turn to coaches in the hot seat, this guy's been listed there for like the last three years. So finally, they fired this guy. I have no idea who the new coach is, to be frank. I haven't looked it up. Normally, I do that sort of thing. I know this. It's not the guy that they fired. So I figure it's addition by subtraction, and we're going to go ahead and say Fordham getting the 10 uh, is going to be close enough to cover against George Mason. All right, Valpo is a three-and-a-half point underdog at home versus Bradley. Uh, Bradley was uh, uh, supposed to be pretty good this year in the Missouri Valley. They've had a bad year. Uh, I'm thinking back, I think they've screwed us at least once this year. Uh, but we're going to take them again. Uh, I think largely we're thinking that Valpo just upset Drake. Drake was undefeated. Drake was, you know, it's one of the two best teams in the Missouri Valley. And Valpo totally upset these guys. So we're thinking they're on cloud nine. They're not paying attention. Bradley is going to go in there and uh, sneak out a win. They already lost to Valpo once this year. So I'm thinking Bradley, again, will uh, be focused on Valpo and have 
you know, Valpo having Bradley's full attention, I don't think Valpo's going to be totally focused on this game. They're still going to be reliving the big upset. We'll take Bradley. Now, there is Drake. There is Drake. One loss now, having lost to Valpo. Uh, this is kind of a, you know, one of these unknown teams here that, uh, you know, it, it, did anyone talk about Drake before the season started? These guys ran off like 17 straight wins. That's incredible. Um, but now they've lost. They always have this theory that when you have a long streak and you finally, the streak ends, then you turn right around and lose again. In other words, oh, thank God, that's over with. And, and you know, it, it just takes you a couple games to get refocused. Um, I have no idea if that's true or not. I have no data to back that up. That's just a, just, just a guess. It's a guess. It's all we do in the barn here basically anyway. So I think Drake is going to have a letdown here. Not only that, this weekend, this weekend in the biggest games you don't know about, Drake will be playing Loyola of Chicago, uh, who was in the Final Four, what was it, two years ago, three years ago, I forget which. Uh, they're having another great year, Loyola of Chicago, and that is going to be a huge matchup between those two teams. Both of these teams should be in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I don't know if they will. You know, they, see if you see Drake... Drake winning, what, 17 games in a row, and Pomeroy has him at 63. That seems wrong to me, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen, I saw Drake for about 10 minutes against Indiana State on some bootleg YouTube uh, channel game or something without announcers, and it was weird. Uh, anyway, um... We're going to take Northern Iowa. We're just going to say this is a sandwich game for Drake. We're going to take the nine and a half points. Uh, I think that's a okay play there. So, one, two, three, four, five. Five straight road teams. What else we got? Uh, we got Rutgers catching seven at Iowa. Rutgers had completely fallen apart. Lost, I think, five straight games. Now they've won four straight games. Rutgers right now, ESPN has them as a six seed. So for the moment, they are safely into the tournament. Uh, Iowa, they just lost at uh, Indiana. Uh, Pomeroy still has these guys ranked at number five. Um, now let's just do what we always do. Let's just go ahead and take the road team. Now Rutgers uh, has given Indiana trouble. Uh, they would already lost to him this year at home, but it was close. It was a two-point loss in Piscataway. Uh, Rutgers was uh, up in that game. They were up five, maybe seven, nine points in the second half, and then uh, just couldn't close out the deal. Uh, largely lost because they shot like four from 12 from the line. Now, Rutgers is not a great free-through shooting team anyway, but that's even poor for them. So, that was a game they definitely could have gotten. They lost it. Now they're playing these guys again. Getting seven. These two teams are not that far apart, and Rutgers gives Iowa trouble. So, we're going to say Rutgers here with the seven points. Uh, let's, go, uh, let's go off the map. Let's go off the map. Uh, it's, it's Southland Wednesday. Uh, we got Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi is facing Stephen F. Austin. They're catching 17 and a half points. I'll take the points. 17 and a half points with Corpus Christi. Uh, Southeastern Louisiana. They are catching 11 and a half points from Sam Houston State. We will take Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, all right, back in the main uh, main drag here. The SEC, the SEC, we got Tennessee, their 12 and a half point favorite. I've been so unimpressed with Tennessee. That team just does not interest me. I, I just don't, you know, I'm not seeing it. I don't get it. I don't see why there are these huge lines on this team. I, so I'm going to take the 12 and a half. Georgia's actually won a few games here. They actually have a plus 500 record. So I don't know if Georgia's that much worse than Tennessee. Georgia actually has played Tennessee pretty tough here 
in the past, uh, you know, five to ten matchups or so. So we'll go ahead with Georgia there. Uh, back to the Valley. Uh, I think we've actually won a game with Southern Illinois. You know, I know that's amazing, but I think we actually won a game with Southern Illinois here recently. So we're going to come right back with them. Uh, I think that's a, if I recall, uh, a young team maybe meshing, a young coach. Maybe this team's starting to get a little better. Uh, they're still getting six and a half points from Missouri State. We'll take the points, Southern Illinois. Uh, we're back to the Southland. Northwestern State is a one-point favorite over the word, incarnate word. I, I was going to look up to see how exactly you pronounce that. I mean, incarnate word, in, is it incarnate word, incarnate? I, I, yeah, I'm not a religious person, so I don't know. I believe in God, uh, but I don't know how to pronounce incarnate. <laughs> I'm very sure that's a religious word. Anyway, we're going to take the road team yet again. Northwestern State, uh, minus the one. Uh, Rhode Island, uh, catching eight and a half from St. Louis. St. Louis hasn't played many games, and I'm thinking that's a detriment to them. You know, if they can, if they can get a groove and hit a groove right before, you know, the tournament start in early March, not playing a lot of games could be a plus in that they should be fresher but they need to play together to hit that groove. And I don't think they've hit that groove yet, so we'll take the eight and a half. Uh, Marquette, Villanova. If you, you know anything about the sports barn, you know we love us some Jay Wright here in the sports barn. You know, we are Jay Wright people. Uh, that is one of the best coaches in America. Uh, he's laying 11 against Marquette, an inferior team. Uh, Villanova already pounded Marquette out there in Milwaukee, a place they generally have trouble, but they pounded them this year. We're not going to get off what we're doing here. We're just going to take the road team. Uh, Villanova had not played many games either, so that's another team that's been uh, just virus unlucky. Either they've got it, their opponents got it, we're playing once a week, we just can't get in the rhythm. Uh, I think Villanova is a good, really, potentially really good team, uh, but I don't think they're hitting their stride just yet. A little dangerous here because uh, Villanova is explosive, but what do I know? So uh, we'll take the 11 Marquette. And then lastly, for a sure about that, the late night game, uh, San Jose State is getting 29 and a half points from San Diego State. 29 and a half points in conference. That's unheard of. Uh, and this game's on CBS Sports Network. I mean, it, <laughs> this is the type of game where, you know, I, I envision a future where a network like Barstool will take over broadcasting um, some of these college basketball games. And they will simply... Put the point spread right there in front of you, and we'll talk about it continually throughout the game. Because who in the right mind is going to be watching this game at 11 o'clock at night, Eastern, uh, where one team is so much better than the other team, there's no reason to be watching this game except for gambling. 29 and a half points. Will they cover it? Will they not? I say San Jose covers not 29 and a half. They just played. San Diego State blew them out, what was this, within the past week, you know, in one of these back-to-back -back deals. And San Diego State knows damn well they can name the score. So, you know, that coach might be thinking, all right, well, here's a good chance I can play some freshmen, uh, you know, rest some guys. There's no reason for this guy to go out for blood tonight. Um, again, the only reason you're watching this game is because of gambling. So, you know, I, I, I look forward to the day. I actually have seen some of these uh, uh, European soccer matches in Europe. And they're much more free about how they talk about odds and point spreads. And, you know, they don't call it the point spread over there. They get some other term for it. But uh, they, they'll, they'll tell you about it during the broadcast. So, uh... That's coming. 
that's coming. I mean, uh, the future's bright, you know? It, 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 the future, uh, they're, they're, I swear to God there'll be a day where I don't have to wear a mask. I actually think that's going to happen at some point. Uh, so I just cannot wait for that to happen. Uh, you know, hell, we got a local little casino they're going to open here in town. That thing was supposed to have been open already, except the virus screwed everything up. So uh, the future's bright. I hope it's going to be bright tonight with our 14 games. I'd like to have a winning night. You know, I, I, let's put it this way. If I go like 4 and 10... Yeah, I probably won't come back out here. I'll probably just sulk and pout, and I won't uh, make another video, at least for another couple days. So I don't want to do that. I like making videos when I'm at least breaking even. Uh, give me that. Seven wins. That's all we ask. Seven wins. Can we get seven? That's what we're hoping for. Eight or nine would be better. All right, there you have it. Let's get it up close there. So everybody take your screenshot so you can read it. Hey, hit the like button if uh, we uh, actually break even here. Uh, or even subscribe. Of course, I haven't really deserved any subscribers lately because I've been losing and uh, not making that many videos. But we'll always attempt to do better. Thanks for being here, and we'll talk with you again. Signing off.